In today's video I want to talk about programmer defined functions and to introduce the keyword return and how it's used in the programmer defined functions. So today we're looking at functions. If we look at the schedule we will see that the topic of functions is in week five and continues into week six before the midterm exam. Reading is here, so all of these are links which will take you to the relevant parts that you should read. Now the web page is here, and we're talking about programmer defined functions right now. I'm going to leave you to read this section. I'm going to summarize it in today's um, video. Now, if you go to the, if you go to Python create a new window, a new file, and type this in. I'm going to show you what happens when you run this code. Now what I've done, I've created a user-defined function or a programmer-defined function. I've called it greeting. And this is the function header, which is composed of the keyword def at the start of the line, followed by the name I want for my function, followed by the brackets, followed by the colon and indented is the only statement in this function which is just print hello. Now to run this function you have to call its name. So anywhere in the code you can call the name of the function and the function will execute and print hello. Now this is the function definition. Function definitions always go at the top of the code. Um, we may have more than one function defined in this code. In this case we only have one. It's always at the top and underneath these are the statements uh, to be executed in our code. So this is actually the first line in my program that will be executed. The next line is a call to the function greeting. So this is known as a function call. It's calling the function Remember, all functions have these parentheses. They may be empty, but all functions have parentheses. Now, when this function is called, execution will jump to this line here and execute the code. Uh, when this is finished, uh, this, this particular function only has one line. So after this has been executed, then the execution returns to the main program and will continue at the next line. So the operation will go, first line is this line, the next line will jump to execute any statements in the greeting function. Once that is finished, then execution resumes at the line after the greeting function call. So when we run this, you'll see what happens first thing that happens is this line here we see the output this is the first line in my program then it's a function call so execution will continue here where it prints the word hello and once this is finished it will resume then at the line after the function call and here you can see the output of the code now when we finish, when the when function has finished executing, we say it returns back to the main program. And there is actually a keyword called return. And if you want to, at the end of your function, you can say return. Uh, but you don't need to put that in at the end of your function, because by default, at the end of a function, the function will return to the main program. But if you want to, you can see that this will run exactly as it did before. And there it is. So there's no change if you put return at the end of a function. Now normally we don't put return at the end of a function because that it will return anyway, so we don't need to waste time typing in something that we don't actually need. But sometimes we'll put a return at a different point. Uh, for example, I could say something like this. Uh, let's say answer is uh, input 
do you want a greeting? And let's say, let's give them a clue, yes or no. Now, whatever they answer, yes or no, if the answer is Y, uh, oh sorry, if the answer is N for no, then we'll just return because they don't want a greeting. So I could say something like if answer is equal to no or answer is equal to, because they might type in uppercase, uh, you can use single quotes or double quotes, doesn't make any difference. So if the answer is no, we'll just return. And if the answer is not n, then we'll print hello and then return. So let's see what happens now. Uh, do you want a greeting? No. So this time it didn't say hello. It went straight down to the last line, which is this is the next line of the function was called. Let's see what happens if we say yes. So I'll run again. See if I want a greeting this time. Now if I say Y for yes, then this is not true. So it will go down to print hello and then return. So I want a greeting this time. And it says hello and then goes to the line after the function call. So return is used to return back from the function immediately. And when it does return, it will return back to the next execution, which is the line after the function call. Now, sometimes you might want to return a value, and you can do that. At the minute, we're not returning anything. And we're not returning a value, we're just returning. So if we don't return a value, it will just execute the next line. But what if we wanted to return a value? So let's return a value. So I'm going to return the value, let's say we'll return a string. No. Uh, otherwise, we can return yes. So what's going to happen to that is that we're now going to return a value no or yes. Now when we return that value we can assign it to a variable. So I can say result is whatever is returned from the greeting and then underneath let's print the result. Print uh, the value returned from the function is and then we'll print result. Okay, let's see what happens now. So when I run this code, well first of all let's save it. What's going to happen now is this is the function definition. Now this will not run until we call the function's name. We call the function's name here. Now, the first thing that happens in this code is this line will be executed. The next thing that happens is, now this is just a regular assignment operation. Now, if you remember with assignments, the value on the right is assigned to the variable on the left. So here, the value is going to be whatever is returned from the function, yes or no. That value will then be assigned to result, and later on we can print out the result. So bear in mind, you can return a value from a function. This greeting function call will be replaced by whatever is returned. Now in this case, we're going to, uh, if they want a greeting, it's going to return no. Sorry, if they don't want a greeting, it's going to return no. If they do want a greeting, it will print hello and then return yes. 
let's see what happens so this time let's say we want to have a greeting so I say enter Y and it prints hello then it prints this is the next line after the function was called the value returned from the function is yes so let's see what happens now if I run again but this time I'm going to uh, answer no so let's run this time I'm going to enter n no and this time it says this is the li next line after the function was called the value returned from the function is no of course this time I didn't want a greeting so it didn't print hello so here we've got two runs from this code this code has a function which is returning a value now one thing I want to show you before I finish this uh, little video is what would happen if we didn't actually return anything what would it print what would it actually return well let's try it out so I shall remove this and actually let's just go back to this make it simple alright so what I have now is back to a simple function and this time I'm not returning anything I'm not even using the return keyword so but I'm trying to assign the result of calling this function to a variable called result now this function is not returning anything and but is it if you run it you'll may be surprised by the result let's run now this time the value returned from the function is none now none is a keyword and it represents nothing it means nothing was returned so if you try to assign the, the return value of a function that does not return anything technically it does return a value called none so the none object represents nothing and if you see the word none it's referring to the a function which has returned nothing so let's run this again and there you see the result and let's just show you what would happen if we did return something so this time I'll return the number 8 now what's going to happen now is when the function is called it prints hello and then it returns number 8 number 8 replaces the function call so this now is a value of 8 which is assigned to result and result will be printed here so let's run so the returned value is 8 in this case so you can return anything you like from a function bear in mind that when a function executes it will finish when the function reaches the first return statement so if I underneath here I said return 10 this statement will never be executed because the function has already gone it's already returned number 8 and finished so let's see what happens here we'll close the old shell and the output will just be the same it's going to return 8 so the function finished when it met the first return statement 8 was returned so essentially this function call was replaced by its return value of 8 this is 8 8 is assigned to result and result is printed here so 
we can have return I've just lost my program now we can have the return keyword in any function no you can have as many return keywords as you like or none um, you don't need to return a value you can just use the word return if you return a value then that value replaces the function call and can be then assigned to a variable if you wanted to you could also just print the greeting so I could say something like this print greeting so what's going to happen here is whatever is returned will be printed and you'll see what happens here so when I restarted here uh, let's uh, see what we'll put that in a clean shell make sure we're seeing the correct output so program starts let's see if I can move that over or move this over uh, maybe move that over a little bit okay so the first line in the program is printed and it prints this this is the first line in my program now the next line is a call to the function greeting greeting will then print hello and then return 8 so it prints hello and it returns 8 to this variable now here I'm printing greeting so it goes off to print hello and then it prints the number 8 which is the value that's returned from greeting so this is replaced by the number 8 and then the next line is called and the last thing that happens is that the value that was returned is going to be printed out in the variable result so we can use the return statement inside of a function now by default if there is no return statement a function ends when it's executed its last line but if there is a return statement as soon as the code reaches the first return statement then it will return and continue at the line after the function call if there is a value returned that value can be assigned to a variable and print it um, so the return statement is a useful statement um, it's in the next video I'll show you how you can use the return statement and that's the end of this short video